What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 Early Access Meta Sound video. In this video, we're going to be talking about seamlessly transitioning from one music piece to another without setting up BPMs. As always, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you'd like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guy Discord server, you will find a link in the description below. With that being said, let's get started. All right, so I've got two music pieces here and they're just short little loops cut out from the same song. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this up so that when we trigger the first part, it will loop and loop and loop indefinitely until we hit the next trigger. And then it will seamlessly jump from this first song into the second song clip without setting up any BPMs. So I'm gonna go ahead and play these two for you real quick. Uh, they're just short little samples, just so you can hear what they sound like, so you know when those loop points happen and when that transition happens. So here's part one. And here's part two. So you can hear that they're pretty similar pieces, it's just the second part has a little more layers. So the way we're gonna set this up is I'm going to create two meta sounds and I'm just going to call this part one meta and then I'm gonna call this one part two meta. And so from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and open both of these up. And just to do a little setup, I'm going to make them both stereo. So in this first one, we're going to go ahead and create our wave player. And we're going to connect the outputs here. So we have audio output. And I'm going to select that part one. And then the second one, I'm going to create another wave player and do the same. And make sure that it is playing part two. Now in this first one, we're going to go ahead and we're going to tell it to play. And as I had mentioned in the getting started with meta sounds, we can actually set these off using box triggers. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So when we hit the first box trigger, it's going to trigger this input and it's going to play the sound. And then whenever it is finished, we want it to then trigger the second one. So we're actually not going to select this input and move it to play. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here to our part one and when this is finished, we are going to send a trigger to play part two. I'm gonna just copy this and come over here and we're going to receive a trigger and I'm gonna paste that in there. And you can put whatever you want in these triggers so long as the send and the receive are identical, which is why I copy and paste it just so there's no chance of any typos. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we've got our send when this is finished to play part two, this is receiving play part two. But we want this first one to loop. Now I'm not gonna check this loop tick box. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to drag off here and we are going to get a trigger toggle. And so when we start this trigger, uh, we do want to turn that trigger loop on. But when we hit the second one, we actually want it to turn it off. 
So I'm gonna come off this input and I'm gonna do another send trigger. And I'm gonna call this turn off part one. Again, I'm gonna copy that. And I come back over to part one and we are going to receive a trigger with that turn off part one. So now what's gonna happen is we're gonna hit that first checkbox. It's gonna trigger this and it's gonna play part one. And then when we hit the next trigger box, it's going to send a message to turn off part one, which is then gonna turn the loop off. And then when that way, when the loop turns off, it will play one more time from wherever it is, and then it will finish. And then when it finishes, it will send a message to play part two. Now, since this is our last part, I can go ahead and just set that to loop. And we're gonna go ahead and hit save here, save here. And we're gonna close our meta sounds for now. Uh, because we need to set up those trigger boxes. So with our trigger boxes set up, I'm just gonna go ahead and open the level blueprint. And you can make these separate blueprints. I'm just doing it in the level blueprint just so it's easier. And we're going to, we've got our first trigger box selected. So we're gonna go ahead and just call a collision function to that one. And we're gonna need a collision function for our second trigger. And from here, I'm gonna drag off and I'm gonna do a do once. And I'm just gonna copy and paste that. And the reason I'm gonna set this up as a do once is because I only want those triggers to transition the music whenever we jump into it for the first time. And I'm actually going to start this one closed um, because we wanna make sure that we're hitting that first trigger before we jump into the second one. I'm gonna go ahead and grab our two meta sounds. And we're going to connect them here. And then whenever this first one is triggered, that's when it will open up this do once. We can go ahead and compile, save, and close. All right, so we've got our trigger boxes set up. We've got our meta sounds set up. And we've got our blueprint set up, so we are now good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play, and you can see the trigger boxes here. And as you can see with the do once, the second trigger box does absolutely nothing because we haven't hit that first trigger box to open it up. So we're gonna go ahead and hit this first trigger box. And so we've got our music playing, and I'm just gonna let it loop a few times. And then once we're in the middle of the loop, I'm gonna go ahead and hit that second trigger box so that you can hear that it actually does let it finish first. So there you have it. It's a relatively simple setup. Uh, it can get a little confusing with sending the triggers back and forth, uh, but sending, being able to send triggers from one meta sound to another is really great. And we can set this up without having to set up quartz and without having to set up different BPMs. So hopefully you found this interesting. Again, if you like this stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If there is anything that you'd like to see me try with Unreal Engine 5, let me know in the comments below. Until next time.